now to introduce our panelists. Bill Powell is a registered nurse and certified diabetes educator working at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver. He has um, He's had type one for 19 years and is an avid athlete, spending his free time playing squash, cycling, and hiking. After spending many years struggling with low blood sugar during exercise, he has now found success in reducing their frequency through the use of a dex and looping with his Omnipod. He enjoys bringing his lived experience to his work um, in the Diabetes Center at St. Paul's Hospital um, and helping other people with type 1 live healthier, happier lives. Our next panelist is Charlotte Rosario. Charlotte was diagnosed with type 1, for, um, has been diagnosed for 18 years. Um, after 14 years of using MDI, she switched to the Medtronic 670G um, in February 2019. And I remember when you switched, Alec, because your life, just your quality of life just improved dramatically. <laughs> I remember that. Um, Charlotte is a full-time counselor um, and at the Vancouver Couples and Family Institute. Um, she's passionate about helping people living with type 1. And apart from that, she also enjoys cooking and baking. Our third panelist is Aaliyah Mills. Aaliyah was diagnosed um, in 2012 at the age of 28. She has two kids, ages eight and two, um, and didn't start using a pump until the busy mom phase of her life arrived. Physical activity has always been a big part of Aaliyah's life and a big part of maintaining stable blood sugars. Um, she's grateful for a family that supports her to fit in fitness most days. Aaliyah is halfway through a master's program. I didn't know that, oh my God. Congrats um, in special education. Um, and her full-time job is in supporting students with disabilities at Vancouver Island University. And our final panelist is um, Alan Heal. Alan is 58 years old and he's been type one for 33 years. He lives in Vernon, BC, um, where he enjoys an outdoor active lifestyle um, that includes cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, um, hiking, and biking. Alan has been using um, the Dexcom CGM and the Tandem Pump combination for three years. Before that, Alan used MDI um, and just did finger pricks to check his blood sugars. So um, we, again, we have people representing the three different pumps today, and we have Phil Powell here. If you do have a clinical question, um, please feel free to ask Phil. Um, please feel free to enter questions in the chat box um, if it, you know if something prompts you to want to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and ask our panelists um, three different questions um, and get their answers. So the very first question I'm going to ask all of you is, why did you decide to use the pump brand that you use? Um, and if you want to speak first, just raise your hand. So, or I can call on you, Aaliyah. <laughs> Sure, yeah, I can speak to that. Um, I originally started with a Medtronic pump um, about eight years ago, and uh, I do not recall the reason why I started with that one, but it worked for me great. Um, and then uh, upgraded to the next, the 670G, and that was just uh, like the ease of like, okay, I had a Medtronic, I don't need to learn anything new, I'm just going to go to the one that, that it upgraded to once my, I guess, expiry with the original one. Uh, had timed out. Uh, but then I did switch to Omnipod and it was because of like a lifestyle logistical challenge. So I had a new baby and there's breastfeeding and just the challenge of um, uh, like just not wanting one more thing. And I was getting the tubing hooked on stuff, babies pulling on the tubing. So I switched to the tubeless option of Omnipod. Um, and I guess I can say I'm, I'm technically not using the Omnipod right now. I'm on a pump vacation. So I've gone back to MDI multiple daily injections uh, at this time. And that's to give a bit of like the sensitivity to adhesive um, a rest. Great. Thanks, Leah. Um, Alan, what about you? Um, yeah, I, so I actually started um, with the Dexcom first. Uh, it was actually probably more closer to four years ago that I started with, um, with the Dexcom. The reason I, I, I made the switch to that was um, uh, I was just I just felt I was getting burnt out. I was constantly having lows, um, and um, you know, my, it seemed like my life was revolving around um, um, my diabetes, which I wanted to. I finally got to a point where I so wanted to change that. Yes. 
So I started with the Dexcom and what it told me is um, kind of what I already knew, but it gave me the data, which was um, my A1C was always pretty good, but my time and range was not. Um, it was down in the um, um, 70 or low 80%. Um, and I use an app called SugarMate, um, and it has a bunch of KPIs you can set up. And, but one of them is your flux rating, which is really how steady your, your blood glucose over, over a period of time and how, how up and down does it go. Um, and my flux rating wasn't, wasn't great. Um, so I started to then investigate, you know, pump options, and, um, and I settled on the uh, Tandem uh, T-Slim. Uh, several reasons for that. One being it has a great integration with the Dexcom um, and it has the, at that time it had the basal IQ, um, which would um, start, um, stop the um, um, basal um, if I was trending low, which is for me was a, was a big, big win if that would uh, work the way I hope it would. And then of course, reduce the alarms and, and just give me more freedom around being able to exercise when I wanted to versus when, you know, my blood sugars would let me do it. Those were some of the main reasons that I, I was uh, looking at the tandem. I also really liked the smaller size of it at that time. I, and I don't know if it still is, but it was one of the smallest pumps out there. It has a really nice um, touch screen on it. And I would say the menu system was very easy to use, very intuitive uh, to look at it. Um, and then I also wanted things like software updates. You know, I, um, I I'm in technology, so I see no reason why these pumps shouldn't be able to get software updates and get new features uh, through the life of the pump. And, and again, Tandem uh, offered that. Um, because I was also new to a pump, I was really, I wasn't sure what kind of um, infusion set, can, uh, cannule that I should use. Um, and it seemed like um, Tandem had a good selection of different options that I could try out and figure out which one um, uh, uh, would work best for me. Um, and really the final reason was, you know, everybody I talked to that was using Tandem just had very positive comments on it um, uh, as far as their, their use of it and, and how it worked for them. And a lot of them were able to achieve similar goals to what I was trying to, um, to, to achieve as well. Great. I actually remember um, when you were deciding on whether you're going to use a tandem as yeah. well. I feel like I'm at these important moments of everyone's lives. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Charlotte, what about you? Um, yeah, so um, four years ago, I was a, a student living by myself and um, I was uh, struggling to fall, get good sleep at night because of the just the fear of uh, going low. Um, and not having anyone to kind of wake me up or help me with that. So uh, my endo at the time suggested that I try out the Medtronic 670G and their auto mode. Um, and, and also my friend who's joined us today, Marina, was using the pump and she's been the pumper for a long time, the Medtronic 670G. Um, so I thought, uh, and she had had a positive experience. So I thought, why don't I try it and see where that goes? And I'm really happy with it. Yeah, and what was it like for you when you had that the, the new system? Oh, I yeah, I slept like a baby the, <laughs> that night. I tried the the auto mode, and I had never like for fourteen something years of my life until then I had never had slept the you know comfortably or without worrying. Um, and it just changed. Like I was more present in my class. I had more energy. I started eating better. Um, so yeah, it, it, it really changed my life for the better. Okay, great. And Phil, what about you? Well, just as a quick pause there, somebody had asked to explain auto mode. Do you want Shalette to explain yeah. that and her experiences yeah. maybe? Yeah. You've sure. used it. yeah, so Medtronic 670G uh, communicates with the Medtronic's guardian sensor and it manages the basal insulin for you. So it releases based on the information that it receives from your sensor. It will uh, manage the basal insulin for you. You don't have to set it or you don't have to do anything. That's essentially the auto mode or the looping system with, uh, it's called the looping with the pod, I guess, Omnipod. Um, so it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, so it takes care of the 50% of the work for you. 
the, the terminology is getting mixed now. So the official term for all of these different looping softwares is automated insulin delivery or AID. Um, but more casually, it's kind of known as looping because that was the off-label version that came out years ago. Um, yeah, I, I use Omnipod. I actually started with Tandem and I think Tandem is just a gorgeous pump to work with. Um, I, I am very active though, and I managed in the course of a couple of months to use my squash racket to tear out a number of sites where I would hook the tubing and pull it out of me. I also ran into a wall while playing a squash and smashed my tandem pump, so it didn't quite work the way I needed it to. Um, so I jumped over to Omnipod because having a tubeless pump um, seemed like something that would really benefit me, and I've, I've loved it since then. Um, I do like the freedom of not having tubing um, and not having to carry an additional device with me. Um, yeah, so I, I'm very, very happy with Omnipod. Okay, yeah, I hear from a lot of people who are athletes, avid athletes, that they switched from Omnipod for that reason, just um, getting it caught on things. Yeah. All right, so our second question for our panelists um, what are the pros? I mean, if you had to name pros and cons of the pump brand that you use, what would they be? Um, and again, Ali, I'll start with you. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can carry on with the vein of um, uh, sports. So uh, when I was using the 670G, it actually had a pro for the sport I was doing at the time, which was roller derby. Roller derby will not work easily with a whole Omnipod um, device because that's going to get bumped around so it was actually really great for me to have just the site remove the whole pump for the duration of about cover it in tape and then and then I could just plug back in either at a break um, take on some insulin if needed or just after the bout um, so the pro and con about flexibility for different kinds of exercises is a relevant thing to consider um, but likewise um, tubing in a baby I already mentioned that um, didn't work I also have had um, challenges with the tubing um, I guess it's baby related, but like car seats and getting in the car and that kind of thing. Um, have had the tubing get caught trying to get something at the back of a closet. So just tubing catching on stuff is a, a con for me um, with those pumps. And then um, I would say the difference between like, I guess now you would compare it to the T-Slim, but this guy that has the size of like a double A battery um, going in at the 670G is just really thick. So um, different people wear their pumps in different spots. I always use a belt clip because I'm not like a pocket person um, and I can't wear it in my in my shirt, in my cleavage because that's just not an option for my body. Um, and so I found this too big. If I were to uh, like look back in time, maybe the T-Slim could have been a better option because it's not just the tubing that catches, but the actual pump, right? Great, thanks, Aaliyah. Um, someone just wrote in the chat box, um, Phil, back to you, just um, to follow up. Do you use Eros or Dash? And do you have any preference? And, and can you can you talk about what Eros and Dash are for those who don't yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the Eros version of Omnipod is the older version. I don't have a PDM with me here, but it had an older control device um, and it controlled a similar looking pod to, to this one. Um, Dash is the newer version. It uses a cell phone looking device operates very similar. There's no tubing, um, settings are put in the same way. So that the primary difference is the control device that's used to, um, to manage it. Um, I have used both Eros and Dash. Um, and in terms of preference, um, it depends on a couple of things. So one of the lovely things about the Eros um, system, and in some ways I, I actually prefer that system, is the old control device used batteries and those batteries lasted like one to two months. So um, in terms of energy that you had to put into remembering um, when to change the batteries, I found it a lot easier. It was also like a Blackberry. It was just an indestructible device. Um, the new Dash system um, uses uh, like an old cell phone. I've been told they're retired Galaxy phones, although I don't know if that's actually true. The battery life on them, it tends to be, they need to get charged every one to two days. Um, so a lot more um, regular charging of them. So if you're somebody who's into backcountry camping or something, this means carrying um, you know, a battery pack with you, something that's a little bit, you're going to be able to charge it regularly. Um, I do use Dash now, and that's mainly because I use looping software as well, and that's compatible with Dash. So I hope that was clear enough, but I, I find both have their advantages. For the most part, I actually preferred Eros, but I do use Dash now. Okay. Melody, did you have any follow-up um, questions? I mean, because that was your question that I asked on your behalf. 
Uh, yeah, thanks. I've um, yeah, because I've just been offered to move to the Dash, and I was just wondering, um, you know, if, if that was a, a good thing to do. I find the PDM with the Eros is um, really difficult to read in the sunlight, and I don't know whether the one with the Dash would be is any better. Um, you know, I guess if it's more like a cell phone, then it might be easier to read. You know, if, if I'm if I'm out snowshoeing or something, I can't read the the, the PDM at all with the Eros. Yeah, I think I think the functionality of using the PDM for Dash is a little bit nicer because it is um, a touchscreen device and is updated. So so mm -hmm. if visibility is is the bigger factor for you. It's probably the right choice to go to that. Mm -hmm. um, and for mm -hmm. most patients, I think they do quite well on it. Um, mm -hmm. The main reasons I would say to stay on Eros is if you do want that device that has a battery that lasts a long time and you're less worried about having a clean, um, mm -hmm. easy using device. Yeah, and, and I hadn't realized that uh, sort of originally. And I think that that's a really good point because yeah, the, I, I can make batteries last five or six weeks usually. And yeah, anyway. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, um, there is also a question for you, Phil from Dave. Um, he wants to know which pump um, gives the diabetes nurses and your healthcare providers the most useful information. I think they all provide similar information. Like there are some that I'm more familiar with. I see Omnipod more often, but all of them can download reports um, that the diabetes clinic is able to see how much insulin you're using and when you're bolusing, um, how you're using corrections. Um, so in terms of useful information, it probably has more to do with um, the comfort of the practitioner and what devices they're familiar with, because all of the pumps do provide us with information on, on your um, insulin pump use. So I'm going to ask you this, Phil, um, just because you're talking about the, you know, endos. Um, do you find that um, the endos, uh, like that the majority of endos are comfortable with pumps and CGMs or, you know, it's just something that, you know, because I can imagine an endo who's not comfortable with technology won't suggest it just because of their comfort level. And so what do you see when you're working um, at St. Paul's? Um, I guess I can't speak too generally. Um, I get the sense that the endos do not have high familiarity with these devices. Um, I generally don't see endos adjusting settings too much. That's usually deferred to the nurses who I think work a little bit more closely with them. Um, there are definitely endos who seem to have more comfort with ordering them. And we have our, some endos who just don't seem to put patients on pumps. And I guess that's because their familiarity, familiarity is lower. Um, so pretty wide variety, but, but in general, I don't see endos um, getting into kind of like the nuances of pumps and adjusting settings. It's usually the nursing staff or, or dietetic staff that's doing that. Okay, great. Um, and another question from, oh, actually, uh, Dave, did you have any follow-up to that? Okay. Question from Derek, is looping with iOS and Dash available now? Um, it is, yes, actually. And you don't need an orange link as well, which is really lovely. Because for the longest time, if you wanted to loop with Omnipod and using an Apple phone, you needed a little connector device called an orange link. You'd have your phone, the orange link, and the Omnipod. Um, recently, they've released an update, so you no longer need that orange link to connect your phone to your Omnipod. OK. Yes. Um, yeah, now we're getting lots of questions in the chat box. Philip, this is for you again. Um, how do you set up looping with the Omnipod Dash? Um, are there any groups or resources you'd recommend? I guess my question for you, Trisha, is do you want to wait for these questions at the end to continue with the, or do you want me to go through these questions now? Well, I'm trying to do it so it just kind of makes sense in the flow of the conversation, because okay. um, we, we still have a lot of time. Um, so yeah, um, and because the next question actually is for Shallot. So okay, um, how do you set up looping with Omnipod Dash? Um, there's a couple of different ways. Um, it, it depends on what kind of phone you use. So if you have an Android phone or an Apple phone, there are different softwares that you'll use. Um, the Apple software uses. Um, there's a website called Loop Docs that you can Google, and they kind of walk you through how to set it up on your phone. And there's a few versions for Android, Android APS, which you can also Google. And the other one is called Free APS, I believe. Maybe Jerry can confirm that for me. Um, and in terms of setting it up, these softwares are not Health Canada approved. So in general, if you're wanting to use looping software with Omnipod, it generally requires that you're gonna be a little bit more independent because if you go to most diabetes centers, 
I can tell you most of the nurses and dietitians that work in my center are not familiar with it. It's pretty well me. And that's only because I use the software myself. Um, we are very fortunate that we have BC Diabetes in Vancouver and Dr. Elliott and Jerry, um, Nurse Jerry Klein um, and their team that assists patients with setting up um, looping through Omnipod. Okay, great. So I'm going to go to Yusha Elliott um, to ask this question in the chat box, but also move into the pros and cons for you. Um, do you know anything about the seven-day infusion sets arriving at the end of April for the Medtronic pump? I've heard about it. I don't know a lot. Um, and the the only concern I have with that is after about three to four days of the infusion set on your body, the sensitivity starts to dwindle a little bit. It's not as great as the first day you put it in. So I wonder if they have the seven day infusion set is, I don't know if it's going to work for everybody. Um, yeah. Okay, and along those lines, what would you say the pros and cons of the 670GR? Um, so, so, well, I think the pros um, as, as a, the device function for the 670 pump is that it, again, the, the, the auto mode, that it communicates with the guardian sensor and manages the basal insulin level for you. Um, um, and, and it, you can put it on a temp basal mode when you're exercising. So you can, um, that that's been really useful for me. I usually put it on the temp basal mode before I exercise an hour before so that when I'm exercising, I don't go uh, into low. So you can, so usually you, you set a target blood sugar range, uh, that you want for yourself. So it, it uses that to kind of, uh, give you the basal insulin, um, but when you're exercising, you can it sets a higher target. It, I think the target is eight point three instead of a lower one, um, and and gives you less basal insulin so that you don't go low when you're working out um, or even walking. Um, also, like Phil was saying, you can use the Medtronic's Care Link to upload all the data to. Um, to the, the, their, whatever that software thing is and share with your healthcare practitioner. So I, I find that really useful. And it also gives you a prediction of your A1C based on your sugar levels throughout the month. Um, in terms of the appearance and use of the device, I like that I can suspend the pump, uh, suspend the insulin delivery when I'm taking a shower or going for a swim um, at night. Um, you know, you can move your pump from uh, one side to the other, depending on what side you're you're sleeping. So unlike the Omnipod, which is stuck to one side and it can create some discomfort when you're sleeping, that doesn't happen with Medtronic's. Um, yeah, you can hide your, when you're, you you know, if you're wearing a dress or something, you can put your pump, you can take the clip off and put it in your bra or put it in your pocket um, and such. So that's another thing that I think I like about using Medtronics. Um, are we looking at the cons as well? Yes. <laughs> Do you have any cons? Can you identify any cons of Medtronic? So um, more than the pump, I think they are more related to the sensor. Um, so the you know the sensor needs to be changed every seven days. The guardian sensor, if you're on auto mode and using the guardian sensor for it, then every you know I know the other sensors can last up to two weeks, but this one you have to change in seven days, and sometimes it dies even before that. Mm. Um, the sensor needs calibration twice a day. Uh, at least twice a day, sometimes more. Um, the pump has a, gives out a lot of notifications and that can be annoying. Um, yeah, again, the sensor comes with these adhesive tapes that I'm very sensitive to. I have an allergic reaction to those, so I buy my own tapes now. Um, uh, the, the auto mode doesn't always work efficiently. So my insulin sensitivity is influenced by the, my hormonal cycle, the change in weather, temperature, uh, you know, the part of the body, the infusion set is placed on. Um, and so the auto mode can take uh, some time to catch up with your pattern. And until it does that, 
sometimes it's three days since you put the infusion set and you change the site um, and you know it has to relearn so the auto mode is great at night but especially during the day I find that it it's it doesn't always work it, it can sometimes give you too much basal and then you go into hypo or it doesn't give you any basal at all when it senses that you're going into hypo um, and then after two hours you find out you're going you know three arrows up because there was no basal for the you know two hours before that um and yeah i don't like that to read your sugar levels you have to look at your pump like you don't you can't look at your phone or anything because of the sensor um i think doesn't connect with your phone but that's my understanding so yeah okay. and another con is that it gets stuck like um alia you were saying it i just hate the strings getting caught in different objects and such yeah so okay now um, Alan, what about you? What are the pros and cons of the tandem T-Slim? I know you love your tandem T-Slim, so maybe there are no cons, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Sure. Yeah, and there definitely are are a few, um, uh, but I'll start with the pros. Um, you know, like if I think back to when I first started um, with the tandem, my the onboarding experience I had was amazing. Um, I had a nurse assigned to me to help me, and she there was there for as long as I needed help. Um, and she was pretty much available 24 by seven to me. Um, so really just really a, a great, great experience that I had with the onboarding. Um, I took to it very quickly after I would say about two weeks, um, my first two goals, which was to improve my time and range and, and improve my flux score. I was seeing the results already after two weeks uh, of that, uh, which was quite amazing to me. Um, and then the longer I stayed with it, um, the, the more more things I was able to get benefits from. Um, as um, Aliyah mentioned, you can remove and, and reconnect the, the pump. So if I wanna go swimming or if I'm going on a really um, uh, steep uh, hike, by example, off some switchbacks, which I was doing not too long ago, um, I want to totally disconnect, so I'm not getting any insulin because I know I'm going to go low. So I can just disconnect it for a little bit before um, and then reconnect it when I get to the top and if I need to do a quick bolus if, if required. Um, the basal IQ and control IQ, which kind of gives you that looping um, that others have talked about, um, I, I really like that. Uh, I don't have too many issues with the highs. For me, it's all about you know trying to avoid the lows. Uh, but I've heard from other people that, that the control IQ um, side of it um, is also works quite well. It has um, features such as exercise mode. Um, you can do extended boluses. So if you're eating something like a pizza or something, you know, that, um, that uh, is going to hit you uh, over a period of time, longer period of time, you can extend that. Um, but really for me, the number one benefit was being able to have different basal rates at different times of the day, um, weekends versus um, uh, weekdays or when I go on vacation, which is something totally different yet. So just having all those flexibilities to control all that um, has really been a big, big uh, game changer for myself. Um, I would say they have pretty good support Dex, um, a tandem. Um, it was better before COVID. I think everybody's kind of suffered a little bit since COVID happened, but I would say in general, their, their um, support is pretty good and they're slowly getting caught up from, uh, during COVID they were definitely, it would take quite a while for um, them to get back to you if it wasn't an emergency type of situation. Um, some of the cons were, it was not covered by PharmaCare. So I had to go through my extended health it took two tries and a lot of work and myself talking to a lot of people to finally get that to go through. So that was a bit painful. Um, sometimes I find the sites can get inflamed as some of the others have mentioned. Um, so I, instead of getting the full three days from a site, I may only get the two days. Um, as good as basal IQ and control IQ are, they're heavily dependent on the accuracy of the Dexcom, which the tandem is integrated with the Dexcom. And if you're not getting good readings from that, um, then, of course, those are not going to work the way you, you want them to do. Um, I would say on the tandem, um, you don't have a lot of options to influence the algorithm for with those two features um, to be more aggressive um, or less aggressive, whatever it is you would want. Um, I wish they would give you a few more options there that would allow you to tune that. Um, 
when traveling, I, I was away um, over, uh, over the winter, um, January, and I had a backpack full of supplies, which, you know, back when I was on MDI and just um, manual um, uh, glucose testing, you know, my, I had a small, small pack. So traveling definitely was a, a lot more work and a lot more trying to figure out what I need to have and carry extras and all those things. Um, I know other people have mentioned the infusion set tubing, you know, to me, it really hasn't been too much of an issue. Yeah, I do get it caught on things every now and then, but um, I've gotten used to it and it's now just part of, part of, you know, my life and I, I haven't really found it too much of an issue. Um, I would say also another con is, um, you know, when I, I belong to several Facebook groups and there's some great features being released in the U.S. and I'm, you know, some of those features were a year and a half, two years ago, but they have yet to hit Canada. Some of those are, um, you know, being able to bolus and acknowledge alerts on your phone versus having to look at your pump. Um, I'm waiting very eagerly for those to be released in, in, uh, in Canada. So uh, that's about all I can think of. Uh, okay, great. Thank you. Um, I had a message um, in the chat box from Franca, and she wants to know, is anyone on, you know, screen does anyone use an Ipsomed? I mean, feel free to just raise your hand. I, I haven't, I've never known anyone who uses an Ipsomed, so. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna move to question three and we've got 10 minutes, perfect timing for Diabetes Canada to transition in. All right, so um, Aliyah, what advice would you give someone who's in the process of deciding which pump to go with? Sure, yeah, I mean, um, hearing all of the feedback from the other panelists with their pumps, it's like there's so much um, info. So sure, you're comparing like, you know, apples to apples, but it starts getting a bit overwhelming and you're actually comparing apples to oranges in that I think that the advice there is like, think about what actually matters to you and your lifestyle, like what are those important bits? And then start comparing whether it's like, you know, you chart it, <laughs> the different options, and then which, until you have one that comes out on top. Um, I really relied on like my diabetes clinic in my town, as well as like literally talking to other pump users and just digging deeper into their pros and cons. Um, but to just acknowledge that it's an overwhelming process, because it's like, there's so much um, info and, and so on. Uh, the one bit that I guess I was thinking hadn't been mentioned, like when I say my advice is figure out what matters to you and then start figuring out which pump is going to match that, um, is this element that has come up for me in different stages of life, but it's like um, the forgetting. So something that happened when I was using, um, I guess, like uh, the Omnipod and you have your PDM in a separate device. This is my cracked one, by the way, they had great, excellent customer service. Another shout out as a pro on that because <laughs> they fixed that. I now have a different one, um, but forgetting this at home and then being like, okay, well, I'm good for a basil, but I guess I can't eat now that I'm at the restaurant. Okay. So that's happened to me. And likewise, I've had a tube pump. So now, you know, it's attached to you. You can always push the buttons, except, oh, I'm going to quickly have a shower and then I'm going to hop in my car and drive to Victoria two hours down the road. And the whole pump is now at my home. And now I'm in a different city. So if you are forgetful or like, I don't know, there's a mom brain situation for me, but figure out what matters to you and then try and match, <laughs> match a pump to, to meet that. That's great advice. Um, what about you, Charlotte? What advice would you give someone when they're really trying to figure out which pump they want to um, start on? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know if I have a lot of advice, but I'm thinking, um, you know, when I was typing the cons of my pump, I really thought, wow, there are, there, there are quite a few cons to this pump. So, <laughs> and if I had somebody at me like sat me down and told me only the cons I think I wouldn't have taken the risk of switching to pump uh, but so what I want to say is that there are pros and cons to every pump um, but uh, if you know that don't let those stop you because I think the benefits are far greater than uh, we, you can imagine it really improved my life and and once you even once you switch to a pump uh, there's sort of a relationship that you build with your pump. It becomes a part of your life. It's with you all the time. It becomes a part of you. 
And that relationship, building that relationship also takes time. It's like love-hate relationship but so much for you and it also annoys the hell out of you uh, so uh, if you don't like it right at the beginning give it some time help yourself uh, be patient with the pump be patient with yourself and let the relationship grow over time okay. um, Alan what about you what advice would you give um yeah you, you know I think for for me, it was it was a really big decision um, because I was really nervous about having this thing attached to me. So I spent a lot of time talking to the sales reps, and I got got to know them pretty good <laughs> uh, from Tandem and and Omnipod. I uh, had many conversations with them, and they actually um, ended up doing trips up to um, Vernon, not necessarily to meet with me directly, but they were going through Vernon, um, and I you know met with um, both of them on several occasions. Um, and they were really, really helpful for information, providing me sample um, infusion sets so I could take a look at it. They put me in touch with um, people that were using both of the devices that I could talk to and just throw a whole bunch of questions at, which was fantastic. Um, so, you, you know, for me, that, that was an important step to go through. Um, you know, if it was, if my third party hadn't covered the um, tandem, I probably would have went with the Omnipod as my second second choice for sure, um, because it, it has some, I think, some pretty good uh, features as well. The last thing I would say is, um, uh, I would say, don't be afraid to negotiate with these suppliers. Um, one thing I I really push tandem on a few items. Um, they they. You know, magically their pump costs exactly six thousand dollars, which is what most um, third-party insurers will cover you for. But then they have this um, package that includes the um, uh, the case for it and uh, the charging cable and a bunch of other supplies, which is uh, I can't remember. I think it was another four or five hundred dollars. And really, I just told told my rep that. I'll, uh, that's a you know game break uh, breaker for me. If that's the case, I'm not going to move forward. So they ended up giving me all those things and some extra things that I was looking for for free, um, which I was a little surprised with. But um, you know, it's just something to keep in mind that um, doesn't mean you can't negotiate with um, these vendors as well. Okay, and let's close out this discussion with Phil. What advice would you give um, people? And given that you are a diabetes nurse, and this is advice you probably give every day. Yeah, like Aliyah said, I think it really comes down to knowing yourself. I find with all of the pumps right now, um, all of them do something really well, and all of them have something that they're like not great at doing. So with, with Omnipod, I love the freedom that comes with no tubing, but you don't get access to Health Canada approved looping software, which is like a big deal. It, it's a huge, um, it provides a huge reduction in burden of care, and it's, it's amazing to have these softwares, and they're getting better and better with time. So that's the downside to Omnipod. Um, usually the second pump I try and recommend to people is Tandem. It's beautiful, they do software updates, it's really a slick device, and it comes with looping software that you can pair with your Dexcom, which is covered by Pharmacare. The Tandem pump is not covered by Pharmacare. So you need a private insurer if you're gonna go with Tandem, um, because you, can, you can't get that covered through the BC government. Mm -hmm. And then the third option is Medtronic, and um, it's, it's a nice device. Um, their looping software is probably the best Health Canada approved version out right now, but you need the Guardian sensor and that's not covered by the BC government. So all of them have these things that they do quite well and these things that they do less well. And then there's Ipsomed and I generally don't recommend Ipsomed to people. Um, I do suspect that within a year or so, all of the companies are going to be offering fantastic devices, but right now there are, um, barriers to each device in terms of, of what they provide. So I think it is looking at yourself and saying like, what are my priorities? Is it getting a looping software? If you're less familiar, familiar with um, setting up uh, tech software and not wanting to be um, doing the off-label looping with Omnipod, then maybe going with one of the looping softwares through Tandem or Medtronic is better. So it's, it's knowing yourself and, and yeah, following that. Okay, well, great. Thank you so much, all four of you, for sharing your experiences and perspectives. Um, and you know, you're, I'm glad that you all have different pumps. And it sounds like there are pros and cons, definitely, for each one. Um, and we are actually going to move into our next next segment. And we've got Caitlin Federley and Tanvir Sohal here from Diabetes Canada. 
and they are going to talk to you about the Pump Fashion Show, which just sounds so exciting to me. So, Tanvir and Caitlin. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Tang, and for the team for inviting us. I'll let uh, Caitlin introduce herself first. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. It was such a fascinating session. I learned so very much. And yeah, we're excited to chat with you about Pump Couture. Yeah, so um, a little bit about um, my background. I actually used to work with uh, with Dr. Tang before as well, and uh, now with, uh, with Diabetes Canada for a bit. And um, we will share a little bit about our um, Pump Couture fashion show. Um, can you see the slides on, on there? I think they haven't been shared or... Am I sh sharing that? Um, I don't see it. Does okay. anyone else see it? Okay. I will share my screen now. How about now? Looks great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So everyone, so today we're going to talk about our Pump Couture Fashion Show. So first of all, it's going to be held on uh, June 9th, which is a Friday. So uh, so if to keep that in your calendars, and it's in the evening from 7 to 10. So Pump Couture is a, initially a, um, it was a fashion show that was set up by, by Diabetes Canada to be held across the country. So one in Vancouver, one in Toronto and uh, Sa Saskatoon and in Halifax. So this is um, across the board and they're all happening around the same time. So it's really to, to share the idea of the importance of getting pumped, just like we've, we've discussed today and heard so the, the, the great stories from, from each of you on your on your experiences. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, diabetes decamps, as well as the um, the model call out. So I hope you're all excited to to model soon, because I think we've got some fabulous um, individuals in the room today. And then we'll follow up with some questions uh, at the end. So Pump Couture is based on having a conversation about living with diabetes, um, especially type 1 diabetes. There's always a lot of talk about uh, type 2 diabetes, and often um, type 1 diabetes gets uh, negative misunderstandings, and individuals with, with diabetes often have that um, uh, have those concerns as well, as well as import the importance of body positivity. So everyone has a different um, body shape, size, and and also the the pumps fit fit differently, and everyone is comfortable in in certain ways. So making sure that there is that um, that positive outlook, and that everyone is um, being embraced in terms of the the way they are, and especially with the inclusivity and diversity. So we are looking for, for a range of models because uh, diabetes impacts everyone, especially if you're in a high-risk ethnic population, such as uh, South Asian, Asian, Hispanic, or, um, um, or, or African. So in terms of also having that, um, that impact, also different body shapes and sizes are, are all impacted. And, and as you all know in the room, it's, it's still um, every every individual is different. So in terms of um, the, the different facts, so there, every, there's a person diagnosed with diabetes every three minutes. So that's a lot of ind individuals that, that are getting, getting um, diagnosed regularly. And also the people's perception on diabetes, whether it's uh, type one or type two, can can often lead to an impact of um, shame or embarrassment, or people just don't feel comfortable having those conversations if someone um, brings up brings up diabetes. So that could still be a concern, whether it's in schools or in the workplace, not everybody is comfortable with that conversation. So to avoid that, um, uh, that impact, we want to bring the fashion show, which is a uh, pump couture to showcase not only the fashionable items and the and the clothing that'll be out there, but also the different model stories and their experiences and the individual's um, impact to bring the visibility to this invisible disease. So diabetes is an invisible disease, but really people 
people just have to ask more about it and get more more information about it and it's and it impacts people of all ages so whether they're children middle age or or elderly and and a range of of ethnicities as well so the fashion for this event will be um including um of course the um the fashionable apparel that will be um that will be part of the show but also the insulin pumps and the monitors and and anything that the individuals are are regularly using so the big showcase is not only that it's on the clothes but on the devices that you're that the individuals with um that are using regularly sort of like in the in the photo there um and we want to make sure that that um that the focus is on embracing the the device uh, regularly. So the funds raised for uh, Pump Couture will be for will be provided for for D camps, which there there are nine camps that are that are held, and and the BC location is Kakami. and uh, D camps are are medically supervised. Um, uh, summer camps for kids that are who are for individuals who have uh, type one diabetes and can foster the the impact of having that that summer childhood that most people or most children do see. So the camps for ages uh, seven to to seventeen years old, and it's also is it's to provide that authentic uh, camp experience, but also providing the support to the individuals to those children who. Um, in order to manage their diabetes, so that way they they are um, they they are managed and they get that um, that support as well. So the Vancouver event, uh, like I mentioned uh, earlier, will be on Friday, June 9th, and it it will be at Heritage Hall from seven to ten. Um, we are looking for uh, for models, and we're doing the opening the call out until April fourteenth, uh, which is next Friday. Um, so if you're interested in being a model, please let us know by then, but we will be accepting applications until the end of the month and um, we'll uh, include the the email address to contact us directly so that way we can we can provide le less um, less of an intrusive on on your team here regularly. And uh, so if you are interested. Um, please do let us know. Um, we will give you the model package as well. And this is an opportunity to share your story. So one of the things that the models will have to do is um, provide their story. And that way, when um, when they are walking um, down the ramp, that is going, the story is going to be shared with the, um, with the individuals to really show that, um, that personal aspect. Because each of your stories, each of the model stories are are very very close to your hearts and and close to their hearts and we want to we really want to share that because not everyone can understand what an individual with um with type 1 diabetes has or or type 2 diabetes goes through i don't have diabetes myself so in terms of sometimes there there is that um um there is that disconnect so we do want to bring that um approach to you as well uh the Tickets would um, for any any friends or family who want to see you at the uh, at the event um, will include food, beverages, entertainment, and it'll be a fun evening um, as well. It's it's going to be a really nice layout, and it is going to be like a a typical fashion show as well. So we'll make sure that um, those are all those aspects are there, and all proceeds raised for the event uh, will be used to send uh, children with type one diabetes to Diabetes Canada's uh, D camps, and also providing them with the with the opportunity to enjoy life without having to worry about um, worry about their diabetes and have that uh, that youthful uh, summer camp experience. So if you are interested, and if you are interested, if you could raise your hand, that would be great to get an idea on on who might be interested. No pressure though, but we would love for you to uh, participate. Um, do you wanna uh, stop your screen so then you can see hands? Yes, there we are. And thanks, Dave. And we are looking for people of all ages. So age is not a factor. So I do want to make that clear in terms of they can be from uh, young children to 100 plus. So whoever is whoever is interested um, and uh, we will put our, our our link in the 
Oh, Caitlin has has added the link here, and we've got questions. Uh, Alexa. Oh, sorry, I didn't have a question. I was just raising my hand saying I would potentially be interested. Oh, okay. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you again. And now we'll open it up for any questions that anyone may have about the event. And I've just, I placed up, I placed both myself and Franca's emails. Uh, Franca is also working with Diabetes Canada. It reach out if you know, like, uh, to introduce to us uh, that you feel might please reach out and we'll send to you uh, further information as well as I've also linked um, the event page where you can get tickets if you'd just like to join the event and come and participate. And if you, oh, go ahead. Start I was going to say, Tanvir, it's um, in the chat box. It says, do you need to live in the lower mainland to participate? Would you like no. to answer that? You don't actually, as long as you're able to come to the event, um, we will be providing a model package to the individuals interested. Um, if you're able to come for for the event, that would be great. We would love for you to you to participate. So there's no geographic um, restriction on that. Um, but we'd be honored for you to come if you're if you're outside of um, BC. But if you are interested in one of the other locations, there is one in Saskatoon, Toronto, and Halifax. If that's easier, but if you can make it to the Vancouver one, even better. I had a quick question for you about um. So are you like actively recruiting models? Like I should send it out to friends that I have that aren't on the call. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So if anyone, um, if you know anyone, um, whether on the call today or that wasn't able to make it or that is in your circle, do let them know, provide them with um, with Franca's email address and reach out. And we'd love to to have all your friends there and for all of you to to attend. If you're if you're unable to model or don't want to model, um, you know, it's sometimes a, a daunting experience, but we'll make sure that you do have the support there. But we'd love to see all of you there. And it can be individuals uh, with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. We're, we're open to all. We really want to showcase the whole community. Yes, so exactly, Marina. So you can cho uh, choose the attire that you would like to wear. Say if you have a lifestyle event that you love to do, like hiking or climbing or whatever it may be uh, that you're pumping. Pump to do. Um, certainly you can choose to wear your own clothes. Uh, there will be options for both. Yeah. So I like to say I recruited three 10 year olds yesterday and one is a hockey player. And so he's going to wear his helmet and his hockey jersey. Another one's probably going to wear their swimsuit, you know, going to the public pool. Um, and I just talked to someone today who's an adult, um, and she is interested in wearing her scrubs because she's a nurse. So again, wow. like you really want to showcase your lifestyle. Um, it'd be great to get people who, you know, Janet, I know you hike and you've talked about where you put your pump when you hike. So you know, it would be perfect model. And thank you very much, Dr. Tang, for, for providing us with those names and the like Dr. Tang said, we've got 10 year olds, we've got the, the range is there. So and the professions are, I'm, I'm sure it, it depends even at work, depending on how what your um, uniform may be, it may be different. So we, we'd love to hear from from all of you and the more the merrier because we want to showcase the, the diversity out there. Great. So um, any like lingering last questions for Tanvir or Caitlin? All right. Um, and if you, again, if you're interested, just contact them. Um, and, you know, I want to thank our panel today um, who came out, uh, Phil, Alan, Aaliyah, and Shalit. Um, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. I want to thank Caitlin and Tanvir for telling us about, you know, the Pump Couture uh, event. I think it's going to be, it's Diabetes Canada's top model. <laughs> so I, I think it'll just be a great event to go to. Um, and everyone else, um, again, if you have any topics you want us to feature on our huddles, just, you know, email me, email my team. 
um, and let us know what you want to hear about, uh, because, you know, again, we really just um, take your lead of what your interests are. Um, and we want to wish everyone um, a good night, and we'll see you hopefully in a month at our next panel. Thank you. Tricia, sorry, yes. before we pause, did you want me to quick rapid fire go through these Q&A questions? Oh, if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to? So yeah, if you want to stay on, there were there were actually some pre-submitted questions, and I asked Phil to go through them. So again, if you are not constrained with time, um, I'm going to have um, Phil. I'm going to hand it over to Phil to um, talk about the questions that were submitted earlier. We can try and make it briefer. That way, it doesn't drag on too much longer for everybody. Um, okay, so we have a question from anonymous. I would like information on Medtronic 670G during exercise. Do I need to turn it off or put it on exercise mode or what? Great question. Um, anybody who's using a pump during exercise, uh, I think it's good to get familiar with either the exercise mode that's offered if you're using like an auto mode or a looping mode, um, or even if you don't have access to one of these softwares, um, learning to get comfortable with using temp basils, which are temporary decreases to your normal basal rate, that you might use during exercise if your blood sugar tends to drop when you're moving. Um, so for the question specifically with 670G, there is an exercise mode. If you are exercising and you do find you go low, um, it tends to be best to put on these exercise modes like one to two hours before you start the activity. Um, but it's always best to see how your body responds. So start with an hour before, See, see how it responded, was that enough? Maybe you need to put it on a little bit earlier to help prevent that low. Um, did whoever submitted that question have any follow-up questions about that? Okay, I'll just keep moving on. Do the pumps and CGMs connect together? Yes, they do. Um, the current ones that connect together from Health Canada approved versions are Medtronic, in tandem, um, we've talked a little bit about non-Health Canada approved connections of pump and CGM through Omnipod. Currently, Ipsomed doesn't offer any version for this right now, but they're currently submitting an application for that. And they're probably about a year away from being able to um, have the pump and CGM can talk to each other. Which pumps are covered by Fair Pharmacare? Um, so Fair Pharmacare, tends to cover, like they, they call them first line pumps. Um, Omnipod is the one that they tend to encourage people towards as well as Ipsomed. For patients, you can also get coverage through Medtronic if your endo or physician feels like that is more appropriate for you or if you've used Medtronic before and want one of the newer versions, Pharmacare will also cover that. There's currently no Pharmacare coverage for tandem pump, unfortunately. So if you need, if you want that one, you have to have a prior uh, private insurer that's going to pay for that. How do you change the transmitter when your pod is still active? Do you change the transmitter first or the pod? I think this question's a little bit confused. So the transmitter that you might use with your Dexcom is a different device than um, a pod, I guess they're referring to Omnipod. Um, and how you control them is a little bit different. So with your Dexcom, you would change the sensor or the transmitter using your phone. With Omnipod, you'll have a control device called a PDM, and you can use that to change your pod. So they're, they're changed using different devices, um, and they don't have to be timed together, or one doesn't have to be changed before the other. Um, they're completely independent. Another question from Anonymous. I tried Omnipod and had a scary low and required assistance. I've been too afraid to try it again, not sure what to do. Yeah, absolutely. Lows can be very scary, especially if you know you end up having a severe low and you need to have a friend help you or you end up in an eMERGE. With insulin pumps, people require, or they tend to require less insulin than when they're doing injections. So it might've been that you switched to using an insulin pump and your settings were perhaps too high. So if you find your worried about using a pump and you have these fears of having lows, I would say have a conversation with your diabetes team, with your endocrinologist, and maybe when they make that transition for you, they can make sure to be really, um, what's the word, conservative 
in terms of the settings, because if you're if your concern um, and your barrier to trying this is worry about lows, they can edge towards having your sugars be high for a few days and then slowly bringing your settings down. But that's a conversation I would say have with whoever your diabetes team is, because yeah, managing fears is important, but I do think pumps are becoming better and better. I used to tell people that there's there were good arguments for using MDI or good arguments for going with pumps. I find that argument is getting weaker and weaker as these looping softwares come out. So I'm encouraging more of my type one patients to using a pump and it might be worth for you to explore your fear around this and, and see if we can transition to that or transition you to onto a pump um, in a way that you feel safe. And then the last question, it's a, it's a two part question, very new to insulin pump and on Omnipod, AKA pod for pod users. Do you ever wear a patch that covers the entire pod? If so, what are the pros and cons? What brand of patch would you recommend? Thinking a patch might be useful in the summer when wearing shorts and t-shirt and knocking the pod might be more frequent. I've not used any of the over patches um, and I've actually not had a, many patients that have used it. I do know there's a number of different brands out there. Um, you can find ones that make people make on Etsy as well. Some of the more popular mainstream brands are Peels, um, Griff Grips. Uh, there's one called Sugar Patch. It's more common. I can't speak to the quality of these and maybe Jerry um, has more familiarity with this in terms of which ones tend to stick better or work better. Um, sometimes when people are doing activities that are significantly more, what's the word, aggressive, um, they might use full rolls of tape. There's medical tape that you can put over top of the pod. So there are like high schoolers who will wrestle and they'll wrap an over tape around the whole Omnipod just to keep it protected. In general, that's probably overkill for most people and just using one of these patches is enough to keep it on you um, if you're somebody who finds that the pods tend to come up more easily on your skin. There's also products um, that can help with the adhesiveness of the pod. So using a product like SkinTac um, and there are stronger and weaker products than that depending on, on what you're looking for. Um, and then the last question for pod users, um, and Medtronic and Tandem. Have you ever experienced insulin in your pod getting too warm and losing its potency? I realize you can sleep on your pod. However, I know of a father and when he is hiking with his young son carries um, him, the body heat generates up, it heats, it heats the insulin and it loses its potency. I also know of someone who wears Medtronic and if that person sleeps on their pump, it heats the insulin due to the body heat. And again, losing the potency, this person has termed it cooking the insulin. Yeah, we heard about this a lot in the last couple of years with the heat wave. And, and this is really interesting. Um, I was reading articles recently on this. And so when we look at insulin use at room temperature, normally we would be told to discard it after four weeks or sometimes you hear upwards of six weeks. And that's a kind of a normal room temperature. Um, you know, so the question is when it's hotter out, does your insulin go bad faster? And if you lay on your pump or you lay on your insulin, say your pen case or something like that, do you essentially cook the insulin so it doesn't, um, doesn't work as well? These studies that I had read, they actually found that the insulin potency will decrease over time. And they looked at um, temperature ranges between 25 and 37 degrees. And they found even on days that are kind of hot during the day and then it cools down overnight, they weren't really seeing that the insulins were getting cooked a whole lot faster, um, that they were still good up to a month. And they were finding their potency was actually still quite high, like 85 plus percent, um, up to two months, up to three months. Not that I'm recommending to do that. Um, so I guess to answer the question, I don't think it's likely that laying on a pump is likely to cook insulin. Um, there might be other factors going on that might contribute to why you're less sensitive to the insulin. Um, but from a number of different studies that I've read, um, it doesn't seem like short-term exposure to high heat is, is likely to, to cook it. So certainly not laying on it overnight. Um, if you put it in a pot of boiling water, and they've done that for some of these tests, you can cook your insulin in about 30 minutes. Um, but even then, they, they put it, they, they had one, uh, one study where they actually put it in 80 degree water, and it was still 85% effective after half an hour being in boiling water. So I think this concept of laying on your pump and having the effectiveness go down um, is, is not so significant. 
I hope that answers everybody's questions. All right, thanks, Phil, for staying later to answer those submitted questions. Um, again, if anyone has more questions they forget, feel free to email us and we can certainly forward um, those questions to Phil, Shalit, Alan, um, or Aaliyah. Um, and I want to wish everyone a great night and we'll see you in a month. Lovely.